Hello YouTube people, you might think I'm not wearing any watch today and you are wrong, you're so wrong. Let me show you a new fashion trend, little bit crazy, but what you gonna do? G-Shock, perfect size for an ankle, new fashion trend. No, it was a joke, I really hope this kind of a fashion trend won't start ever, where people would be wearing a watch on their ankle. That's a little bit ridiculous, <laughs> even though the watch is big enough to do that <laughs> physically, at least for me. Anyway, it just shows that, well, you have to have fairly big wrist to wear this kind of a watch. For me, it's like, well, right now it's tight enough to, to stay in place, but yet somehow I can fit several fingers on the side because it's so long. <laughs> anyway, speaking about those big G-Shocks, I have a bunch of them because I got 60% off of a retail price. So I took the opportunity to play with them to find out whether I like them or not. And it turns out I'm fairly neutral towards them. It's just like, yeah, whatever, good watches. <laughs> they look very playful though. So out of the bunch that I currently have, like these two G-Shocks, right? I really hope camera focuses. Then this big G-Shock, this is kind of nice, very playful, I like those hands. And this one, for me, this one is the nicest one. I like this one the best, but my wife has completely opposite opinion. She says that this one is the ugliest one. Anyway, I will flip the camera, I will try to explain you why I like this one the best and what kind of positive and negative things this watch has anyway. Yeah, that's how it looks like on a person when I'm not wearing it on my ankle, <laughs> I'm wearing it on my wrist. Anyway, what I wanted to show you mainly about this watch is the looks of the watch. I do really like how it looks like, how it, all of those colors play out with each other. It kind of... You know, it looks very well balanced. All those colors are toned to the same level. None of them overpower power each other. It looks very playful, but in a kind of very nice, cohesive way. Very playful watch. And the design overall also, it's, it's crazy. But nothing comes out of place too much. Everything comes out of place evenly as much <laughs> as any other thing. So it's, it's very even, very cohesive watch, I would say. As crazy as it is, but it is rather nicely done. So that's, that's my opinion about the design. Going into detail, speaking about design, there is one thing that I really like a lot about those digital analog G-Shocks is that Casio hasn't cheapened out and haven't made just one model of hands to all G-Shocks just painted, painted in different colors. No, Casio has actually made different hands for different models of G-Shocks and that actually shows that this is some kind of a premium product we are talking about. Casio hasn't cheapened out and those hands really stand out. They look very interesting on all of those G-Shocks. I like the skeletonization. <laughs> I like, for example, this particular watch. I really like the shininess and I like white tips, white ends on those hands. On this G-Shock I also like how how it is, you know, sculpted out, how, to, how it is skeletonized. It's very nicely done, really, really nicely done. And I really like the fact that all different models have different type of hands. Very nice. One stupid thing is that when hands get in the way of those little digital screens, there is no way of moving them out of the place. You have just wait out. While, for example, with this new model G-Shock, you can actually press the light, press menu function, and those hands will move out of the way. But with this old style G-Shock, there is no such function, so you kind of have to look through the side. It could get a little bit annoying and does impact the usability of the watch. Stopwatch, you know, timer. Either way, there is one good thing that when I'm setting, for example, timer, I can go down in numbers and I can also go up in numbers. But yeah, while these hands are in a way, it's very inconvenient, I would say. Now I want to compare the flashlight, sorry, not the flashlight, the backlight of these watches 
This one it has a very strong backlight. It could also be used as a flashlight, like, like such. Very convenient, also looks very nice. It makes that scary face lighting effect. Now, these two old style G-Shocks. This one also has fairly strong backlight, also could be used to light up the things. But this one doesn't really have that strong of a backlight and it shines from this corner and it's the light window is very narrow in comparison for example this one has much broader lighting angle this one has the best one the biggest one and this one has this one has the smallest one anyway still looks nice looks very nice and speaking about those old style G-Shocks, there is another problem that they just simply don't sit very nicely on the wrist. They are very long watches. You need really chunky big wrist to accommodate the size of this watch. I mean the watch, the size of the watch, yeah, whatever, such is the style. But the way it sits on the wrist, it's like I can't even tighten it up anymore because it starts squishing my wrist but yet somehow there is plenty of space on the side so interesting thing is like, like, like for example i have the same opinion about this watch as as my mom and when she saw this watch she, she said oh this watch looks like a teenage boy's watch uh, i don't kind of agree with that it's like it's meant for a lot younger audience i mean no offense wear whatever you like wear whatever makes you happy but i mean my general sense says that this is for younger audience and i really know that young audience really like this design but the problem is uh, <laughs> teenage boys don't really have chunky big wrists they usually have skinny wrists as i do 16.5 centimeter wrist and they usually have even skinnier wrists <laughs> and i don't know i don't know it kind of you know it gets it right with the design to younger audience but it misses with the size but new g-shocks of the same style do solve that problem for example this one does feel wonderful on the wrist the only problem is that the gap between those holes is too big so i can't really find my perfect fit but in terms of a comfort it just wraps around my wrist so nicely it's like there is no gap nothing it just feels wonderful it's like at first first impressions it's like this is one of the most comfortable g-shocks i have tried no matter the size it feels wonderful only a little bit later i started noticing that it's not very breathable because this strap is very wide so my wrist started to get sweaty and i couldn't adjust it correctly because gap between those holes is too big so anyway other problems but with this one the problem is that it's just it's it's very big very big watch anyway don't really have much to tell anymore about this watch i mean if you have big wrists if you like this style I mean, this is a good watch. It's really good watch. It's very durable, very reliable, very accurate and no quality control problems. I never had any quality control problems with any Casio or G-Shock for that matter. So it's a very good product, good, good watch. So speaking about my website, thomaswatchreviews.com, I gonna place this watch on my tier list into not bad as all those other big G-Shocks. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.